Did you know that a woman steered the course of the early Roman Empire? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the third wife of Emperor Augustus Caesar, the mother of Emperor Tiberius, and the grandmother of Emperor Claudius, Livia Drusilla. Livia, the first empress of the Roman Empire, spent her life serving silently in the shadows of Augustus and making sure her son became the next emperor of Rome, whether he wanted to be or not. Don't forget the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organisation and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week, so make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. As is unfortunately very common for women in Rome, much of Livia's early life is unknown, but we do know that she was probably born in Rome on January 30th in either 59 or 58 BCE. She was first married to Tiberius Claudius Nero, who was a prominent member of the Claudian clan, but he didn't really choose his political alliances wisely and sided with the conservative Optimates, which were a branch of the Senate, and then he backed Mark Antony at the Battle of Philippi. When her husband was exiled to Greece, Livia and their son Tiberius went with him, but he was able to return to Rome in 39 BCE. Livia had two children with Tiberius Nero, including the future emperor of Rome, Tiberius, who was born in 42 BCE, and Nero Claudius Drusus, who became the father of the future Roman emperor Claudius. In either 37 or 38 BCE, Livia divorced her husband while she was pregnant with Drusus to marry Augustus and unite two prominent Roman families, the Julians and the Claudians. Livia was Augustus's third wife. His first two were both for political alliances. After first being married to Mark Antony's stepdaughter Claudia, he then divorced her and married the older Scribonia, who gave birth to his only child, Julia, in 39 BCE. His marriage to Livia ended up being a wise one, since Livia kept a low profile while also being a big supporter of her husband. She became a symbol of the loyal Roman wife who possessed intelligence, dignity and beauty. Many people both inside and outside the imperial court thought that Livia had a pretty significant influence on the decisions of her husband, since he respected her opinion and she was believed to be a generous woman who encouraged Augustus to be merciful. Not everyone in the court saw her in such a positive light though, and thought of her more as a ruthless schemer. Despite claiming that she really didn't hold much sway over her husband's decisions, the Roman historian Tacitus wrote that she had gained quite a hold on the aged Augustus. Although she was an imperial woman and the wife of the Roman emperor, like other Roman women, Livia's duties mostly consisted of domestic affairs. She would have overseen the running of the house and the education of both her children and her grandchildren. Although she did undertake matters that most Roman women did, she of course had some privileges as the wife of the emperor, including front row seats to the theatre and financial independence. With her freedom, she had numerous buildings erected, many of which were concerned with the lives of women, and included a temple to Bonadea, who was a Roman fertility goddess, shrines to Concordia, the goddess of harmony, and porticos, which were covered walkways. She lived with Augustus in a house on Palatine Hill, and she was known as Romana Princeps, kind of like the First Lady of Rome. She was supportive of her husband, of course, but mostly she was concerned with getting one of her sons on the throne as the next emperor. Augustus was said to be devoted to his wife, despite being a bit of a womanizer, and apparently Livia ignored his fraternizing with other women. Augustus's only daughter, Julia, had two daughters, Julia and Agrippina, and three sons, Gaius, Lucius, and Agrippa Posthumus. And since these children were directly related to Augustus and not adopted, like Livia's sons, they were ahead of Livia's children as heirs to the throne. Somehow though, with three boys ahead of Tiberius and Drusus, Livia's plans to have a son of hers on the throne would succeed. 
First, her son Drusus died in battle in 9 BCE, and then soon after, and while still quite young, Gaius died in battle in 4 CE at the age of 23, and Lucius died of an illness in Gaul in 2 CE. Although neither of them actually died in Rome, history does still question whether Livia had anything to do with the boy's untimely deaths. Then, the final son of Julia, Agrippa Postumus, was exiled while he was still young, even though he was adopted by Augustus. And then, he was executed after the death of Augustus. After the death of both Lucius and Gaius, Tiberius became the obvious choice as heir to the throne, although Augustus was pretty reluctant to name him his successor. And it seems that, although Livia really wanted her son to be the next emperor, Tiberius didn't really feel the same way. Although he was successful in politics, he didn't feel comfortable in the imperial house, and even exiled himself to Rhodes, returning to Rome in 2 CE. Not only was he being groomed to be emperor when he really didn't want the title, but he was forced to divorce his beloved and pregnant wife Vespania, and marry the widow Julia instead. Apparently he hated Julia, and may have taken to Rhodes just to get away from her. In 4 BCE, while Tiberius was in his 40s, Augustus finally adopted him as successor, and he was the first in line to be the next emperor. Before his death, Drusus had two sons, one the commander Germanicus, who was the father of Caligula and the third emperor of Rome, and Claudius, who became the fourth emperor of Rome, and ruled between 41 and 54 CE. Germanicus, who was a popular leader, died at the age of 34 in 19 CE, and is believed to have been poisoned by Tiberius as a way to remove him as a threat to his reign. Livia, who was Claudius' grandmother, is said to have prayed aloud that the Roman people might be spared so cruel and undeserved a misfortune of having Claudius as their emperor, when it was predicted that he would one day rule the empire. On the 14th of August, 14 CE, Augustus died, but prior to his death, his health was failing, and he had become more and more withdrawn, and only corresponded with his wife through letters. Many historians believe that not only is the date of Augustus' death wrong, because they think Livia delayed announcing his death because Tiberius was not in Rome at the time, but that she had a role in his death by feeding him poisoned figs. Whilst his health was failing, Livia stayed by his side and sent out bulletins about his health. And after the arrival of Tiberius, his death was announced and his will was read, giving Livia and Tiberius the bulk of his estate. Tiberius as emperor soon became tired of Livia meddling and had her removed from all public affairs. After the death of Augustus, Livia was granted the title Augusta, which was an honorary title given to Roman empresses, with Livia being the first to hold the title. In 29 CE, at the age of 86, Livia Drusilla died, and though she may have been remembered as a suspected murderess, she was definitely a powerful woman who not only stood by her husband, but made sure her son had no challenges to overcome in order to sit on the throne of the Roman Empire. Do you know of other powerful Roman women? Let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.